Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how a chemical can solve a maze. So I have three different mazes here, and I'm going to be using an effect called the Marangoni effect in order to solve these mazes almost instantly with a chemical. Okay, so in order to do this, I need a solution of a fatty acid. So I chose oleic acid here, and I mix it in an alkaline solution of potassium hydroxide. So this is just a little bit of oleic acid mixed with potassium hydroxide here. And then I need some hydrochloric acid. And then I just need some sort of water-soluble dye. So first what I do is put the alkaline solution mixed with the fatty acid in the maze. So that goes through the whole maze. And then at the end of the maze where I want to get to, I'm going to put the hydrochloric acid. And I just have a little sponge here as a source for my hydrochloric acid at the end here. And then all I do is drop in the dye particles and the dye should follow the shortest path of the maze. Okay, so first we're gonna try it on my smallest maze here. And then if this works, we're gonna go to my bigger maze and then for the final finale, I'll go to a much more complex and bigger maze. Okay, let's drop in the dye. Whoa, look at it immediately start to go. It just follows the shortest path right there. It immediately goes to the end of it. So what's neat about this is it doesn't just follow the shortest path, but you can also find the next shortest path. One of the problems with the computations of the shortest path is it will tell you the shortest path, but it doesn't often tell you alternative paths. But in this setup here, you can alternatively find not just the shortest path, but the next shortest path as well. Okay, let's try with our slightly bigger maze, which has the same path as before. Whoa, look at it go. It works great. It just pulls it right up through the shortest path there. So what we've set up here is basically this concentration gradient through the maze of deprotonated and protonated oleic acid. So what will happen is the dye will get pulled towards the part that has the higher surface tension. Okay, and finally we're going to try it with our biggest maze. So since these channels are bigger, it's gonna be harder to pull the liquid up through it. It could take longer, but we'll see if it can actually solve this complex maze. So first I put in my fatty acid alkaline solution. And then I drop in my hydrochloric acid. And now let's put in my blue dye here. So you can see at first it kind of diffuses both ways, but then it can start to find that concentration gradient and sort of get pulled up through it. And as it gets closer and closer to the acidic solution, then the pull gets stronger. Well, look at it start to meet there and just cr create this turbulent flow. So you can see how the strong the pull is there. It's actually sucking up the liquid, you can see it. So this blue dye that I have here is also changing color due to the pH. So it starts off blue and kind of ends up as this reddish yellow color. So efficient maze solving or finding the shortest path between two points of a complex system has always been a challenging mathematical and computational problem. So if you want to use a computer to solve a system like this, the time that it takes to solve it scales to the size of the system, which would be n raised to some power. So the bigger your system is, it gets inherently more complex and it takes a lot longer to solve it. So scientists are constantly trying to come up with ways to solve these systems using analog methods. So let me show you how this experiment works. So the way this works is through something called the Marangoni effect. And this has popularly been talked about in the way that alcohol climbs the edge of the glass. For example, if you have wine in a glass, it will climb the edge of a glass pretty high above the surface of it and even form droplets that fall back down. Okay, so let me show you what the Marangoni effect is. So I have some water that I'm gonna pour on here. Now watch what happens when I put a drop of alcohol on it. So what's happening here is the water has a high surface tension, but the alcohol has a low surface tension. 
So when you put a drop of alcohol near the water, the water basically recoils from it because it's almost like it's repelling from the alcohol because the water wants to pull itself together, but the alcohol wants to spread out. So what this does is if I have a liquid with high surface tension and one with low surface tension and they're touching together, it creates a flow. See how it got sucked into it? Okay, watch when I put the alcohol now. So the way this is working is the oleic acid can either have its hydrogen on its alcohol group or cannot have it. So it can either be protonated or non-protonated. So where the dye starts, that's mostly alkaline solution there. And so that means it's mostly deprotonated oleic acid. When oleic acid is deprotonated, it has the lowest surface tension compared to when it does have a proton on it. So what we've set up here is basically this concentration gradient through the maze of deprotonated and protonated oleic acid. So what will happen is the dye will get pulled towards the part that has the higher surface tension. So this is really cool. That means if you had a small scale model of your city with all of the streets and everything, and you set up the same setup here where you have the fatty acid alkaline solution covering all the streets, and then you have your starting point where you drop your dye, and then your ending point is wherever you drop your acid solution. So wherever you drop your acid in, then that dye will immediately find the shortest path among all those different roads to your end point, which is really awesome. It's basically an analog computational method using just chemistry. If you wanna learn more about this and see some of the math behind it, I'll put a link to a paper that did a similar setup to mine that was published. I'll put a link in the description, you can go check it out. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.